Thea, could you please tell us uh, your early escapades into education and learning, which I was very closely uh, looking into, and obviously now as CEO of GetBee. Uh, a quick introduction and a context from you, please. Thank you so much and lovely to see you all today and congratulations again, Mona. Super proud to, to hear this as well. So yes, my story, I'm also a serial entrepreneur. I built one of the first online learning apps when apps were still new. So before Angry Birds and, and all the other apps on the App Store uh, for high school students. So it was one of the first online learning apps in the edtech space that later grew out to become one of the first global marketplaces for learning. So we truly connected teachers and students all over the world. In fact, our first class was between a professor in Venezuela teaching a student in Saudi Arabia. And we saw global connections truly all over the world, leveraging that global sharing economy movement. But instead of transacting physical goods, it was services and knowledge exchange. So it was sort of leveraging that wave and that movement that was happening in 2014, 2015, that was really growing as we saw in other segments as well, like with Uber, Airbnb, and so on. So there was a trend that, that we capitalized on, which was the sharing economy, but for knowledge exchange. What was very interesting for us to see as our global marketplace was growing, was that the software we had built behind the service became very interesting, as Mona mentioned, for the, the physical world and the virtual world, for other industries, enterprise, and physical players to be a part of this online movement. Many companies came to us and said, how can we use your technology, but for us with our brand and our business model? So we decided to pivot and launch our software as a pure play service for anyone really charging for their time or selling products through their time. So we launched GetB, which stands for bringing expertise everywhere. And we're very proudly working with clients and partners from Latin America, Europe, Middle East and Africa. So it's very exciting to see how people are leveraging this digital trend in terms of, you know, taking what works physically and understanding how to transform that virtually. We also proudly work with Accenture in Latin America in partnership with, with Expo 2020. Microsoft, of course, a long term partner of ours as well. So it's very exciting to see how we can truly take again that human connection, what works physically into a virtual world and help businesses and enterprise scale that experience. For us, COVID was very exciting because we saw a massive growth opportunity beyond education. So we saw a lot of growth in healthcare, wellness, coaching, mentorship, but the biggest play for us was actually retail. So retail has a massive digital transformation opportunity, and that's where we're seeing the majority of the growth as well. So we really started doubling down in the retail space. But to your point, I think with COVID, that digital current of transformation was there even pre-COVID, but it sort of became this tidal wave that happened during COVID that truly accelerated this digital trend. And I think post-COVID now, it's, it's not only a, an option, it is a must for survival, not only to survive, but to thrive for businesses and enterprises as well. I mean, now we have access to all the information in the world, right? It's in the, it's in our pockets, and it's in our hands. So it's no longer about retaining and repeating information, it's about being analytical and critical to the information that exists. So it's really having that shift in terms of, okay, it's not about learning facts and figures, it's about learning how to analyze, learning how to be critical. This is becoming even more important. But the point that I wanna make and to echo Peter's point here, it's about also from a higher education perspective and also from an employee and employer perspective is to also recognize more of these micro courses. I think that's going to be a big trend that you're gonna see in the higher ed world because by the time you finished your traditional degree, most of what you've learned is already outdated. Look Absolutely. at marketing, for example, right? It's not necessarily about learning all the theories of marketing because by the time that you've graduated, now you have Google Analytics, you have data, you have all of these different growth hacking tools that you, know, you haven't been taught in your traditional degree. So having the ability for employers to recognize these micro degrees and micro reskilling is becoming increasingly important. And we're seeing initiatives like this with His Highness under 1 million Arab coders in partnership with Microsoft in really retrading, reskilling, and making this reskilling accessible to many, I think mm -hmm. is becoming increasingly important in the world that we're living in.